Welcome in everyone. Happy Monday. If you are practicing with us live today and happy any other day that you have found us. This is Spiritual Physique Yoga offered by Yoga Lucian Movement Donation Based Studio. I am so happy and honored that you are here with me today. We've had a request for some hip and hip flexor today. So some stretching, um, even some engagement, some strengthening, um, and some opening. So we'll work on that today. I'll meet you on your mat when you're ready. I'm going to turn up the music and we're actually going to begin with the pranayama nadi shodhana, alternate nostril breathing. So as you're ready, please find a comfortable seat. I'll see you on your mat. Creating a comfortable seat as is appropriate for you, whether you like to sit on the ankles with knees bent, maybe you have a lotus pose, half or full, uh, maybe an easy seated pose is what feels best for you. <clears throat> Whatever it is, let's take a few deep breaths as we connect our root chakra, which is our focus today. Right there where we're connected to the earth, we'll close our eyes. times here we'll roll the shoulders up back and all the way down and then moving the whole body back ourselves sitting tall nice long spine close the eyes and we'll just connect it to our normal breath here And an inhale, letting the belly go soft and forward as we breathe and usher the breath into the body. And with an exhale, navel comes in towards spine, press all the air out from the lungs, not leaving any stale air behind. We'll do this a few more times. Lungs low deep, full inhales, and then lungs low deep and complete exhales. So whether you are a practitioner of yoga and breath work on the regular or not, I always enjoy starting my practice with some pranayam so that it can kind of get me grounded into my practice, settled here on my mat. So as you're ready, turn down this music just a little bit here. So as you're ready, sitting up tall in this comfortable seat, We'll take either hand here. We're gonna make like the hang loose sign. And we're gonna connect our thumb to that side of our nostril. We're gonna inhale through the opposite side of the nostril until the lungs are full. Again, belly goes forward, soft. And with an exhale, excuse me, with a pause, we close that nostril with our pinky. Exhale as we open the thumb and the breath goes out the right nostril. All right, so let's do that again together. Really very simple, right? Although I got a little tripped up on my words here. So inhale through that right open nostril. Your pinky is closing your opposite nostril. Lungs are full. We'll close that right nostril with the thumb. Open and lift the pinky and exhale out of the opposite. So as you get into this Nadi Shodhana, just breathing through alternate nostrils one at a time, I like to bring both of my fingers to my third eye here, this chakra, as I shift from thumb to close to pinky. So close the eyes. There's no wrong way to do this. We'll just get into it for only about a minute, minute and 20 seconds, let's say. You'll just inhale through one side, and when the lungs are full, you'll close both nostrils. The exhale will happen out of the opposite nostril. 
and then an inhale will happen from that same open nostril. Noticing if the shoulders rounded and we brought our weight forward and again, inviting the body to lean just a little bit back, aligning the spine. And we're already halfway through. So continue breathing just one nostril and then another. Many benefits here for this one in particular helps to regulate the nervous system. Sends a very clear message that as we inhale and exhale separately through each side that we're balancing our sides energetically. We're going to do this three more times only, so three more rounds of breath. Once you've finished, just allow your hand to rock, fall, and rest in your lap, either palms face down for some grounding today or palms face up and open, a sign to receive, eyes comfortably closed, just let the breath come in and out of the nose, both nostrils. Notice if you experience or feel the breath differently now. Maybe give your breath a little bit of sound and a little bit of texture through the back of the throat. Good. Keeping the eyes closed, we'll inhale to circle the arms out from the body and all the way up above us. Palms touch overhead. Exhale, hands down, pausing in front of the heart. A moment as we connect to the heart chakra and then send the breath directly here where your hands are resting in front of your heart. Take a moment in acknowledgement of yourself for giving and receiving this sacred gift of yoga. This beautiful time for self love, really diving in to cultivate our spiritual physique, finding out what that means to you. Next inhale, we'll circle the arms out and all the way up again. Eyes open, gaze lifts. Exhale, cactus the arms, open wide, and then bring the gaze forward and extend the arms all the way out. Flip the palms towards the sky. Now a full gesture to receive an opening with our upper body here. Really stretch and reach through the arms. Pull the shoulders down. Again, lean your weight a bit back on those sitting bones. Open through the chest. Open through the heart. Feel the stretch all the way to the fingertips. Give them a little wiggle. And then stretch just a little bit more. Navel towards spine. And coming into the body through the breath today. Last two. That second exhale, the hands will fall to the mat and then you'll just walk them behind you. Walk those fingertips back, maybe ground the hands, maybe stay up on fingertips, press into the ground to lift the heart. And again, squeeze the scapulas, those shoulder blades, pull them together. Widen through the chest. Stay here or ground the hands behind you and then maybe lift the hips just slowly and gently. A nice starting point to check in with our hip flexors, with those quads, the front of the body. Notice the quality of the breath as we're here for one more. And an exhale, we'll return to our seat. Inhale the arms to circle all the way up. And with an exhale, let's come forward, hands and knees. We'll come into our tabletop position. Gaze is down at our mat. We'll roll right into our cat cows. So as you're ready, inhale to drop the belly, arch the spine. Slowly 
Exhale, cat, round chin to chest. Notice as you move with your breath, where your body might be asking for a little bit more to move the head, to move the hips, to move the arms. What does your body organically and naturally just do with the eyes closed? You give permission to move in any way that would best serve you. We're going to play around by unlocking the elbows with your next cow. Bend the elbows, kind of scoop the heart down, and then lift up. And with an exhale into cat, bend the elbows. They're right by the sides of your body, and then round into cat. And so you want to wake up those triceps. So bend the elbows as low as we can go here, keeping them in line with the side body. We're going to do two more just like that. Notice that the elbows bend in line with the body and not out to the side. We are keeping our wrists safe. Last one, you'll roll in and out through cat cow. And we'll come back to our tabletop. Let the hips find the heels. Close with the arms behind the body, palms face up. Head rest on the mat. And the child's pose is a beautiful posture to come back to anytime, not just during a yoga class, anytime throughout your day, if you're in bed, if you just need a little reset. Connect the third eye center down to the earth. You automatically close the eyes and start to slow deepen the breath. So return here whenever you'd like. With our next breath in, we'll start to lift right back into that tabletop. We're going to turn the hands to face the knees. So just spin the hands around gently. And we'll just give a soft, gentle stretch to the wrists. I like to move forward and back just a little bit, maybe side to side gently. And then we'll spin those hands around, fingertips point away from the body. Toes will stay untucked, so the tops of the feet and the tops of the toes are down on our mat. We'll take a deep breath in, and with the exhale, lift the knees up for just that round of breath, and slowly lower down. Good. So notice here, if we're sinking into the shoulders, and imagine cat through the upper back. So let's get strong through our scapula first. Bloods. <laughs> Take an inhale, and with an exhale, as you float the knees, they come just a little bit higher as you drop the head. Stay for that round of breath, and then lower on an exhale. We'll do this one more time. Engage like cat through the upper, upper back, navel to spine. We'll float those knees, and we'll come all the way back down. Lower down elbows, forearms, palms face up, and then step the feet back, lowering the body. Good. So let's squeeze and release our fists here. Tops of the toes and feet are down on the mat. And so once again, engage through the upper back so that we're not sinking into the shoulders, but instead lifting the heart, pressing firmly down through those elbows and forearms. Uh, so we're gonna lengthen and strengthen that right leg and just pick it up off the mat for three, two, one. Lower down. Take a breath in between. Situate yourself to lift the heart high and left leg lifts for three, two, and one. Lower down. Great job, hands over. They slide back underneath your shoulders. We're gonna come into a baby cobra, lifting the heart. Hands are either resting gently with no pressure or maybe they're hovering. 
Eyes can be closed. Last round of breath. And we'll press up, hands. This time as we come to tabletop, walk those knees in, tuck the toes, and we're gonna hover the knees slowly, maybe an inch or two, another inch or two, all the way up until we come into a downward facing dog. Walking out, bending one knee and then the other. Let the head hang heavy. Check in on my comments here. Um, in your first down dog, maybe this is the first time you've been upside down today. So just notice. Bend both knees, look forward to our hands, and we'll walk to the top of the mat. Separate the feet nice and wide, maybe even to the edges of your mat if you're long and tall like me. Let's take a ragdoll pose. You can grab opposite elbows. You could just let your hands rest in the opposite elbow crooks. Sure, love to bend my knees, sway side to side, and forward and back. So keeping nice and wide and either holding elbows or resting right inside the elbows, we'll come to center. And with an inhale, you'll slowly roll to your right side. Come all the way up to stand, elbows come up above you. This was our inhale. Exhale over to your left and then rotate down. Pause at the bottom for a round of breath. And then let's do it again. Inhale. And begin our exhale. One more time, this same direction. Take our circles to the left. So when you're ready, it's just the opposite way. Our inhale brings us up, elbows and arms up. And then exhale brings us over and down. Pause at the bottom for a round of breath. Twice more. When you are ready, as you're ready, you begin your circles to come to. Last one. We'll release the fingers to fall towards the mat. Let the hands slide up the shins and come into our halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Notice here if the shoulders are kind of forward or sagging, press into the hands, try to get the triceps engaged here. And a nice long spine, all the way engaged. Nose points down. Two more rounds of breath as we bring the arms out to the knee. With our next inhale, we rise all the way up. Arms circle, reaching up above us. Exhale, cactus. Inhale for the sky. Exhale, let's fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Arms from shins out to a T and we rise for the rest of that inhale. With an exhale, we cactus to open, not just the chest, but the hips. Only reach up. As we exhale, we fold forward. Last time. it forward. We'll ground the hands here. Step that right foot to the very far back of the mat. And 
out to the left. Both hands are grounded and we ground that right knee. So here, let's shift forward and back a few times, noticing in particular how the front of this right hip flexor is feeling today. And when we feel we're ready, we'll go ahead and just deepen this lunge with our knee down. Engage this back right glute and release it a few times and notice what happens for the front of that hip. And then once you have it, we'll inhale the arms all the way up. Long and tall through the spine, the arms are like a beautiful extension of energy, lifting straight up towards the sky. We're gonna take an awkward twist. So that means to your left, your right arm comes forward, left arm goes back. Staying in the depth of that lunge. And one more breath. With an exhale, right hand just lowers to the mat. The left arm stays towards the sky. So as we come into this twist here in our low lunge, tuck those back toes come off the knee. And if you want a little bit more, more roll to the outside edge of that right foot and reach left arm behind you. Last round of breath. Up and over. Good. Let's step it back. High plank. First one. So let's get comfortable by shifting forward and back. Think of cat through the upper back. In fact, close your eyes. Envision the space between your shoulder blades. Last round of breath. Hinge forward, lower the knees. Then the elbows come halfway down and back up. Got it, twice more. Down and up. Last one. And up, and high plank. Inhale, down dog. Exhale. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Hold on the exhale. Inhale, reverse swan dive right through that halfway lift, arm circle, reach. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, reach for the sky. Exhale, let's float down. Let's ground those hands. Take that left foot to the very back of the mat. Tuck those toes, lower the knee. Make sure this right foot walks out to the right. And as we sink down in this low lunge, let's shift forward and back three times. How does this side feel? Oftentimes one side feels very different from the other. Stay in our low lunge, engage that left glute this time, and then release a few times. And then once we have that strong low lunge, inhale, arms extend. Feeling stable through the lower body, even before we twist. One more breath here. The exhale will twist us to the right, so the left arm goes forward. In that lunge, one more breath. We just do this little half cartwheel. Left hand finds the mat, right arm goes towards the sky. Now, as we're twisted here with the back down, we don't have as much room, so let's tuck those toes. Lift that back left knee and stay here in this twisted low lunge or roll to the outside edge of that left foot and reach behind. Right hand to the mat, right foot to the back. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, knees down. Lower halfway, and this time hold for three, two, and one. All the way down. Baby cobra, hands hover. 
eyes closed, press the tops of the toes down, tops of the feet down, last breath, you got it. Hands to the mat, press up, high plank, inhale, down dog, exhale. Here for five rounds of breath. If you'd rather a child's pose, this is a beautiful time for it as well. Move on from here to create a transition. Again, working with those hip flexors. We're gonna walk those big toes together to touch in our down dog. Inhale to lift that right leg and exhale, bend that right knee, just come forward, tap that right arm, backing up. Let's do it again. One more time. Good. Now pause here. We're going to lower down this right knee to the mat on an inhale, exhale, pick it up. Three more times. Back and up, inhale, sweep this right foot through, exhale. This time, let's come up into our high lunge, crescent lunge, extend the arms, deep breath in, exhale, awkward twist to the right, you got it. One more breath, cartwheel both hands down, right leg goes back, all the way up, bend the knee, open that hip. know you would like it we flip our dog wild thing otherwise stay with that knee bent Over. high plank to low plank we'll meet in down dog or again perfect time for a child's pose if you're working on building more heat downward facing dog and a little bit of a break Keep this practice nice and grounded. Child pose. Five rounds of breath. We're gonna walk the big toes together, side by side. The left leg will lift. Three leg down dog. Exhale, bend that left knee, touch the left arm. And let's do it again. Moving only as fast as you're breathing. And we stay forward. Take an inhale, lower left knee, touch the mat. And exhale, pick it up. Got it. Once more. Back it up. As that left foot comes forward, we rise, crescent lunge. Get ready for that awkward twist. Right arm comes forward, left arm comes back. Last round of breath. Go down. Left leg back. Bend the knee, open the hips, stay here. Come into child's pose. Back of the mat. Hips to heels. Eyes to close. Forehead to the earth. Connect to the breath. Connect to the heart rate. As you're 
ready, coming out of child's pose to a tabletop downward facing dog. Using this dog is our transition. Let's bend the knee and step top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale. Inhale, right. Exhale, hands first. Taking a moment to pause and shifting the weight to that left leg. Imagine roots growing down through the foot into the earth. Hands can stay at heart center. We'll float that right foot. Staying here or extending leg straight. We've got three rounds of breath. This right leg behind us, warrior three. Gazes down. Core engaged. Hands can stay together at heart center if that's helpful. Last round of breath. Let's release into the space. So let's bend and straighten that right leg. Stay here with that leg bent. Reach back with that left hand if accessible and appropriate. We'll deepen the stretch through the front of that quad and hip. Last round of breath. Let's release with control. And as we bend that front left knee, your right toes down on the mat. We'll inhale to come up, crescent lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Roll that back heel down in the hips open. Let's come in and out of the hips. I like to hold my hips, really connect to what's happening here. Each day is different. Our practice shows up differently for us each day. So as you feel ready, we're gonna have the bend in the front knee. And our goal, our aim is to have the knee over the ankle. Let's keep right hand on right hip. We'll inhale, extend left arm, and then reach forward. Let's pause here. Engage the side body. And last round of breath. Stay low in the lunge. Inhale, reverse warrior. Fall shoulders away here and come back for your both arms extend let's straighten that front leg take the right hip and bump it back towards the back of your mat here i like to feel that happen again with my hands and yeah, left arm up reverse triangle So again, hand on hip and lean forward. The only difference, right, is that leg is not bent. And reach forward. Extend right arm up as we rotate. Triangle, stay for one more round of breath. And then come back up. And into that front knee. And we cartwheel the hands to find the mat, spin onto those back toes. So let's get out the same way we got in. Standing splits. Right leg float forward. Head is down. And we'll take a Shiva squat here. Bending again that right knee. And wrap it behind that left leg. Sink down. Send that right leg back and up. And exhale. Right foot next to left. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. With an exhale, we cactus. Inhale, up. And exhale, fold to the earth. It becomes a moving meditation we don't even think about. Inhale, halfway. And exhale. Let's ground both hands. And the left leg up and off the mat.
bend in and out of that knee a few times. Notice the right hamstring and the left side and how it feels for you today. Stay here. Or the right hand circles back for those left toes. And we can stretch. Let's Gonna miss our warrior three on this side. So as we lift up, hands can come to heart. Left leg stays back, knees hips down. One more round of breath. Bend that right knee, left toes touch the back mat. Once we're here, inhale, arms up, and exhale, warrior two. So let's again straighten and bend into this front leg a few times. to my hips, especially encourage this back hip to open. Warrior two is a big hip opener. Anytime our hips are not squared to the front. When you're ready, again, finding knee over ankle. Left hand stays. Left hand. Inhale this arm up and then forward. Noticing if we can kind of lock that lower body down to its engagement. Inhale, reverse warrior. Stay for a round of breath. And then let's come up. Straighten that front leg. So our only difference here is we take this back hip and actually bump it back towards the back of the mat. So this right arm comes up. And we're in a reverse turn. Body stretch, one more breath. Triangle, we come forward and again reach. And then we extend left arm as we rotate. So try not to be worried about how low your hand goes. Instead, be more interested in what's happening right in front body. If the hand is resting on the shin, can it do so lightly? Let's bring it back up where you're doing. Cartwheel hands down. Again, half splits. Left leg comes up, head down. She was squat. Stay for a round of breath. Left leg backing up. And ground, left foot, next right. Inhale halfway. And exhale to fall. I challenge you to keep your eyes closed. Inhale to rise. Exhale to cast. And inhale to lift up. And with your exhale, fold down and eyes closed. Inhale halfway, we'll take a flow. Exhale, plant the hands, step both feet back to a high plank with a breath in. Hinge forward, low plank with a breath out. Inhale, back bend. Bhujangasana. Exhale, downward facing dog will be your transition. Take your time getting there, bend the knees, walk it out. Down dog, knees bend, gaze comes forward. Stepping to the top of the mat, feet to hands. We'll inhale to rise all the way up. Exhale to cactus. Inhale, arms extend, hands come to heart. And for the other side here, we will strengthen and lengthen that right leg down. Shifting the weight. So imagine that even though we'll be balancing on just one foot, we want to engage the mid body here as that left leg lifts. And you can certainly hold the hips, hands to heart, find a drishti, a single pointed focus, straighten that floating leg for more of a challenge. We have three, two, and one. Here's our warrior three. We'll come 
back on the mat for just a breath. And then ground those toes. Inhale up, crescent lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, extended side angle. And roll back, first warrior. Coming up, straightening front leg, triangle. Inhale, reverse first. And triangle as we lean forward, like extended side angle. Come up and spin your toes. We'll inhale, lengthen the arms, lift the heart, and exhale to fold. Now wide leg forward fold will likely feel really nice here. Let the head hang heavy. Shift side to side, in and out of a side lunge as deep as you like. All the way over in and out of a scan passing the right leg. Mm, we'll ground the hands, left hand underneath the face. We'll twist right arm up towards the sky. Deep breath in. Exhale, right hand comes down where the left was, and let's switch our twist. Right down. Let's walk the hands to that left foot, spin on the right. Step all the way up, even facing the back of your mat. It's okay. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, cactus. Deep, deep breath out. Inhale up. This time, arms stay extended. Right knee lifts. Float it up. Send it back. Warrior three. Just for a breath. It's a transition posture. Ground those toes. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, extended side angle. Reach forward and rotate on the exhale. First warrior. Right back up and reverse triangle. Right into triangle as you're ready. Coming up and again, spinning now back nice and wide with the legs. Now, legs, fingers. As you're ready, we'll fold all the way down. Knuckles come up, head to the earth. Bend into the right knee. next level. Right hand finds your left foot or ankle, so bring it across your body, and then twist left arm up. Untwist back through center. If this is too much, bring your feet closer together. Left hand finds right leg, twist. Right arm up. And let's bring it down. Walk the hands towards that right foot. Should be facing the top of your mat once again. Step right to the top of your mat. And if we're not there, that's okay. Just take your time. We'll find the top of the mat. From here, we'll slowly bend the knees, the hands, the heart, and we'll come down into a squat. And so we're going to do two variations of a squat. Um, <clears throat> a couple more postures that help to engage the front of our hip flexors. So this is one of them. We're compressing and engaging here to balance. So we'll take two more rounds of breath. And with our next inhale, arms come forward, palms face the sky, and we rise. 
exhale cactus then arms come up through heart center hands come to hips so our right leg will lift here and we'll cross it over to the left you could touch toes and stay right here you could cross and wrap your toes behind you wrap once or twice okay but what we are going to do is bend and come down into those hip flexors so right leg is on top arms inhale to circle and reach and your right arm goes on the bottom of your left arm find a point of focus right? help steady steady the breath bring those knees forward sink a little bit more down and now we'll release arms untwist right leg comes up and with an exhale plant that right foot and fold inhale halfway and then, and then widen the feet out toes out heels in this is our second squat we'll bend those knees and come down so this is malasana heart lifted finding even more compression here for the front of the hip flexors now notice that there's different um, levels or stages you can be in um, first thing to notice is if your hips excuse me if your heels are up and if they are that's no problem but also maybe try walking your feet out a little further apart because again if you're long like me sometimes we need a wider base and then notice if we sink kind of just ooh, slouch down right and again instead find engagement arms come forward palms face the sky Ooh, more challenging another round of breath and we rise practice the arms and the hips forward open through the front body come up and through heart center walk those feet hands come to hips we'll lift up that left leg let's do the other side eagle those legs again you could just cross touch the toe to the mat and bend that right knee that's beautiful that's eagle you could wrap once or twice left leg on top inhale left arm on bottom exhale Once you find your bind, think a little lower. One more round of breath, you got it. Untwist arms first, inhale. Good, right leg goes up. Ground it down, exhale. Inhale, halfway. Let's take our last flow today. Exhale, fold, hands find the mat. Step both feet back. We're going to take this the slowest. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, down dog. Inhale up onto the toes. Exhale, lower those knees. I'm going to be facing <clears throat> on my mat sideways. We're going to extend this right leg behind us. Exhale, right knee comes to that right elbow. Three, two, and one. Now we slide that right foot in front of that left. And we're going to have a seat. So this is cow face pose. Not the most comfortable. Uh, tends to be very challenging for our outer hips, outer glutes. We don't get into that often. We're going to use this as an entry into our half pigeon pose, which will really target the hip flexors. So uh, I want to comment to move gently and slowly, um, not needing to force anything. Uh, this is a posture that we tend to have to stay in a little while. <laughs> Our body um, needs time to slowly release um, so that we can get into the juicy part of this stretch. So we'll be here for quite a few rounds of breath. Now, if this is too much for you and this isn't happening, you can plant this right foot on the mat 
And then you can just try to encourage the right sitting bone down, right? That's beautiful. Now, if you are in any sort of variation of cow face pose, I like to come forward to my hands and let my top knee drop. I'm sure someone gave me this tip a long time ago, but it really helps me. I let this top knee drop and then slowly I just walk back. And then once I come down with those sitting bones, making sure I'm not sitting on my heel, just press into my feet. Now this is a nice entry and smooth transition into our half pigeon. I'm gonna spin on my mat so that it's easy for you to see. You should be able to stay right where you're at. So from our cow face pose, let's take one more slow, deep round of breath. And with the exhale, just feel a bit of release happening. We tend to do some muscle guarding, which just happens. We don't, we don't do it on purpose, it just happens. And it's all okay. Bring the hands forward and once again, let's walk forward on our hands, whether you did this with me earlier or not. This time we're gonna come up to our knees, ground our hands, and this left leg just goes to the back of the mat. Now this right leg, the right knee comes out to the right and we slowly, I have to kind of walk my left leg back, find our half pigeon. So there's a lot going on here. We're getting even deeper into that back right outer hip and glute attachment. And then for that front of that left hip, the hip flexor, it is the widest, deepest stretch we can find. So move really slowly and gently into half pigeon. If you have any knee sensitivities or issues, this would be one that you would want to pay special, special care and attention to. You can stay up nice and high in your half pigeon. If you feel better, you can have something underneath that right glute to support you, a block or a blanket. You can come down to elbows and forearms. For some people that kind of lessens the intensity, for others it just helps them soften into it. You can sway side to side. You can come all the way down if you'd like, extend arms. Bring the forehead to the mat. And if you're up nice and high, that's beautiful. You just start to deepen that stretch. Now our release from half pigeon is always the best. It feels so good. So we'll take three more deep rounds of breath here. And if you didn't try flipping your dog with us earlier, this is a great opportunity. To do so. So last complete round of breath. We're going to tuck those back left toes under and lift that back left knee. All right. So as this, these toes tuck under and this knee lifts, we ground our hands, pick up this right leg, send it back and up into a down dog splits or three leg down dog. Now let's spin and step that right foot behind us. Now I'm going to go nice and slow. If you haven't done this with us before, just have a seat. So we just take a look. We have our right foot planted behind this left leg and the left hand finds the mat. This is a great place to start. Inhale, lift the hips. Right arm goes up. Now you're stretching out the front of that right hip. And we'll come over onto the mat, lower the knees. Right? And once again, come into that tabletop going to spin for the opposite side. We're going to send this right leg back and exhale. Bring that, excuse me, left, did I say right? <laughs> left leg forward. Good. And we're going to lift it up a few times for three, two, and one. And then slide that foot and ankle in front of that right. So once again, I'll spin on the mat to face now we did it on the other side, but this is a completely different side of our body. So depending on how this feels, you'll respond uniquely to what's going on for you here. If you'd like to try walking forward, once again, I love dropping both knees onto the mat, widening out my feet, and then coming back for a seat. 
If you find you're sitting on your heel, help that foot walk away. And again, if it's a little too much, you're working your way into cow face pose, just hold on to the knee, ground that foot. And taking this a little bit of a yin style where we stay longer. Really beautiful to close the eyes. And again, if you're in cow face, I like to just rub my feet, just kind of dig my thumbs into my feet and continue inviting that left sitting bone down to the mat. And we know that we'll transition into half pigeon after this. So we're just here for maybe another handful of rounds of breath. Notice a micro release with each exhale, something in the body softens. Maybe it's in your face. Maybe it's all the way down in your toes. Well, we're gonna take this and we'll do a slow and gentle transition into our half pigeon. So once again, we'll walk forward with the hands until we'll, we are on both knees. And then we'll just extend this right leg behind us. And as we do, keep sending that right leg back and then widen that left knee to come into your half pigeon. All right, so this time, I'll just turn this way. All right, you just notice what's happening on this side. Now, one opportunity that I didn't walk you through on the other side, I'll walk you through on this side if you're up nice and high in your pigeon. I like to engage the muscles before I ask them to stretch. So I like them to work, which is the idea behind lifting that knee a few times before we stretch. So you're with me there walk the hands back towards the body bring the hands to the heart you'll feel engagement here to help you balance and to hold you up and then slowly bring your hands to the back lower to the elbows and forearms and what was just working for you now has the support to relax to release and maybe moving side to side gently with the upper body is a nice distraction for the intensity that you may feel. And whatever it is, just close your eyes, allow your breath to wash over you, and each exhale to be an exit route for any tension or stress in the body. We're gonna take this to our wild thing or our flipped dog nice and slowly. We'll first tuck those back toes under as we ground our hands. We lift that back right knee. Left leg goes back and all the way up. Now we can bend that knee, hang that foot heavy or flip around. Now we had a seat last time. You certainly can have a seat again. That's beautiful. Just bring the hips to the earth and then let's rise up with the hips over with the arm give it a good stretch and let's come over let's lower down the knees cross at the ankles and we're gonna have a seat let's scooch forward towards the top of our mat if you didn't come down there that's always okay and then uncross those ankles bring the knees together right here holding on to the knees we'll find a boat pose where we're supported hands on knees just lean the upper body back a little bit this will be our last posture that we engage through these hip flexors and one more time we'll stretch them out so from here, as you switch your hands to behind your knees, maybe lift your legs halfway to 90. Notice if the back is rounding here and instead lift the heart, keep the hands on the legs to support you. It's always beautiful to be in a supported boat pose instead of compromising our posture. Right? So if we have this strongly and firmly, we can extend arms. But again, if we soften, Bring the hands to the legs. Lift the heart up. Good. So wherever we are here, we're going to tap the toes on the mat and then lift them up. Good. So this is, just continue here. This is my way of kind of 
distracting the mind. We're using those hip flexors. You'll feel it in a minute. We'll do five more. Keep the heart lifted. And yes, you can do this with hands behind knees. Beautiful. Good. So last one. Lower the feet, lower the body all the way down. To a bridge pose. So here is what we're stretching that we just used and engaged. You can interlace fingers underneath you if you'd like. twist move around if this is not doing it for you if it's too intense or not enough we'll find something that works for you soften the breath soften the jaw and we'll slowly untwist to come back her uh, I need to slide my mic here, crossing opposite leg over and we'll twist the other way beautiful time to close the eyes for the remainder of our practice and let the eyelids meet. Just notice upper and lower eyelids just gently finding each other. Letting the tongue float away from the roof of the mouth. We soften the jaw, the cheeks. And we allow this softness in the face to wash down towards our shoulders and our chest. Even as we untwist to bring those knees back to center, we'll come into a happy baby. Pull those knees to the sides of your body. This is a great place to start a half happy baby, rock side to side. I think it's always so interesting to start here because we keep the head down, the chin towards the chest and the tailbone down. Now what happens as we lift and reach for our feet is the tailbone typically lifts and we start to kind of roll the head up. So again, bring the chin in towards the chest, try to arch the lower spine and bite the tailbone to touch the mat and then rock side to side. Relax those muscles in the face. Reclose the eyes if they opened. So if this happy baby doesn't feel amazing, again, back out. Maybe it's just hands on knees, and that feels really good as we rock side to side and roll on the lower back, the sacrum, the tailbone. Okay, wherever we are, we have two more rounds of breath. We're going to meet with the legs extended towards the sky and legs up the imaginary wall. So I want to invite you to imagine that your legs are being supported by a wall back here. So flex your feet and imagine that the heels, the calves, all the way to your hamstrings are touching a wall. And let's inhale the arms up and overhead. Interlace fingers, flip the palms and stretch the same way you're stretching the feet, right? So open through the hands up above you. But really engage through the legs. So you're pulling your toes to face all the way towards you. Now take an inhale here, deep, deep belly breath. And then exhale, lift the head, shoulders and arms and your arms come up to reach in the same direction as your legs. 
Press the space of your lower back down, lift your tailbone, chin towards chest. Now really lengthen the arms, lengthen the legs. Now take three more deep rounds of breath. Now our release will be to lower the head, shoulders and arms, bend the knees, the feet to touch. The legs slide out, the arms come out, palms face up, and we just naturally find our Shavasana. Just allow the body to become Shavasana, right? Instead of it being something that kind of happens to us, just allow the body to be Shavasana. As you release the engagement body you feel yourself being held by the earth imagine a blanket that is gravity just kind of weighing you down release the tongue from the roof of the mouth let the lower jaw separate from the upper jaw allow the thoughts to come in and out the same way an inhale and an exhale comes in and out of the body hardest posture for us so if you are still here please stay please don't give up shavasana is an integrating posture so so important to choose stillness to choose quiet deep breath into the body, fill the lungs to capacity, 
Open the mouth and exhale. Do it again twice more. A deep, complete, full breath in and a cleansing exhale on the way out. Once more. Wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Move the hands and the feet. With the head roll right and left, if that would feel good for you here. And when you're ready, bring the knees into the chest. Wake yourself up from your Shavasana with a gentle, loving hug. Pulling those knees in. Rocking side to side, just gently rolling over onto the right side as you are ready. We'll pause in fetal pose, right side of our mat. This posture signifies a reawakening, truly a rebirth. As we reawaken to the rest of our day or our evening, we do so with intention, with grounded breath maybe a little less cluttered mind, open body. Help yourself up to a seat as when we began our practice, sit up nice and tall. Take your time getting there. Keeping the eyes closed or reclosing them, inhale to circle the arms out from your sides. Inhale all the way up, palms touch overhead. Exhale, hands down the center line of your body, stopping in front of your heart. Again, we find ourselves here, Anjali Mudra. It's what I find to be the most natural mudra. And just pause for a moment. Thumbs press into your chest, right where your heart is beating and your lungs are breathing. Connect to your prana moment in gratitude for this physical body that allows you to practice asana. Take another moment in gratitude for choosing this for yourself today. What a beautiful choice. What an amazing investment in your health and well-being. When we acknowledge and appreciate that our true wealth lives in our health, we begin to fall in line with different decisions, right? Those that are healthy for us, truly. A moment of gratitude for each other, for sharing our practice, our energy today. We may close in the physical here, but we remain connected and open in the eternal. We bow forward, I honor you, namaste. Great job, everyone. I'm so, again, grateful and honored to have had you with me today. Um, all donations are appreciated. Um, all my information is on my social media posts. If you have a, um, a question, a suggestion, an idea, please reach out to me. Send a message, comment on a post. I would love to interact. And once again, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening blessing.